All right, so thanks for that tour of your studio. And uh, now maybe you could introduce yourself a bit more. Oh, okay. So, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Alex Negria. I'm a concept artist and illustrator from Romania. Um, I uh, started drawing like in around April 2009. Uh, really? That's when you yeah. started? So, uh, so you never that, drew when you were young? Uh, only in classes at, at school and that was once a week or so. Hmm. But yeah, I, I've been trained in mathematics and informatics. Um, I even did one year of college of mathematics and informatics. That was in 2008. <laughs> And I realized that that's not for me, and uh, I switched careers all of a sudden. It was a very terrifying move. Uh, uh, I actually made uh, my parents were a bit upset on me because I uh, kicked all the the career career I was building before that. Uh, so, so okay. how did you make so, that decision then? Because that's a pretty big change from mathematics to art. I mean. Uh, I wasn't happy uh, and I was trying very hard to learn and be very good at mathemat mathematics or informatics but it, it was not for me uh, so yeah uh, I found out that one friend of mine a very good friend of mine um, was going to um, go to a design school and mm -hmm. I said okay I'm I'm gonna su not subscribe I don't know what's the word I'm gonna go there too also enroll right yeah, enroll. Uh, and yeah, I didn't have any, uh, a portfolio. Uh, fortunately, the school didn't require one, so it was like whatever. We accept everybody, and I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> but I I was very scared. I I thought everybody draws like like super well, but actually there were a lot of beginners, and that gave me a lot of confidence in the beginning. Um, but in the long run, I, I'd wish there were many good artists in that school because uh, if you're not surrounded by people who motivate you, uh, it's very hard to learn. So I, I was one of the few ones that they were trying to learn something and not enjoy like the college years. Mm -hmm. I was staying at school like eight or nine hours a day and drawing almost all the time. Because I had that fear in me. I already failed in life with one college, and now I have to do something else. And because my parents w uh, will not be, w will not gonna be able to support me the all the life. Like, right. Um, so this is a design school, right? Yeah. Uh, I did. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't remember the word. Uh, <laughs> It's uh, product design, graphic design, uh, fashion design, and uh, house decorations or something like that. Those were my specialities when I began. But as you were moving towards the end of the school, uh, you, you would have to stick with one uh, choice. And I chose um, product design because I, I fell in love with Scott Robertson <laughs> uh, and with his drawings. and. Yeah, back then I, I I really started like watching a lot of tutorials, learning about all these great artists, and yeah, Scott Robertson was the I think the first one who influenced me to draw more and be more uh, a, a more studious person. Right. Um, so product design is designing just everyday objects. Vehicles, yeah. Vehicles, uh, furniture, I don't know, mice, uh, <laughs> speakers, stuff like that. Yeah. Cool. So you were you, were you pretty good with perspective then? Um, in school, no. <laughs> perspective is a very hard thing to learn, and I, even now, I I'm not sure I know perspective like properly. But yeah, thanks to again to Scott Robertson, I. It, it made it easier to me to learn it. So in two or three years, I, I think I learned a lot about perspective and how it works. Uh, so yeah, I, I really enjoyed his tutorials and they really helped me a lot. Okay. It's, oh, sorry, go yeah. ahead. 
Oh, I, I was going to say that it's it's the perfect tutorial. I have like a bunch of artists that influence me a lot, and it's Vilpu for anatomy, Scott Robertson for perspective, uh, and Hannes for like the will to improve and stuff like that. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so okay. So I'm just trying to get the timeline straight. So. Um, so when you were growing up, were you interested in art? Uh, were you watching a lot of TV or comics or how? how uh, that? I remember I was buying Batman comics when I was young, um, but unfortunately there there are not a lot of comic readers in Romania, mm -hmm. and they soon uh, they weren't available anymore because they, they they didn't have a market for comics here. So I was left only with cartoons on Cartoon Network. I was watching Two Stupid Dogs, Ed, Ed and Eddie, uh, Cow and Chicken. So yeah, those were my cartoon days. <laughs> uh, but yeah, otherwise, like I said, only in school when I had a class I was drawing. I wasn't doing as uh, as a hobby drawing. I I played guitar as a hobby when I was a kid. Nice. But yeah. I I think I've always been attracted to these artistic uh, uh, domains. So, and yeah. <laughs> so did you graduate from school then, from university? Uh yeah, because I don't know. I wanted to make my parents happy because they were pretty. Especially my father was a bit upset on me mm -hmm. because I quit the other university, and I wanted to show them that. Uh, Okay, I have a diploma. It doesn't matter at all that I have a diploma in this industry, but yeah, they made them that diploma made them happy. Right. right. And then so, yeah. after that, what happened? So where'd you go after school? Um, after school, I actually before finishing school in I was supposed to finish school in uh, I don't remember what year exactly. <laughs> um, well, I started working for Game of in 2011. So yeah, I, I was supposed to finish school in uh, summer of 2011, but in in the winter of 2011, um, like uh, in January, I received a, uh, an email from Game of Romania. If I want to work for them, they've seen my work online, and uh, yeah, I, I said, of course, I want to work for you guys. Uh, and I, I went, I I got the interview, and then I, I went back at school and explained the situation to the teachers that, look, I have a, a good paid job. Uh, for many, it's, it was a very well-paid job. Uh, and they understood, and they let me go uh, work in Bucharest because I was studying in Timisoara, and Timisoara is in the exact opposite uh, corner of the seat of, of the country you know mm -hmm. and they understood and they let me go work and all I have to do is return and um, uh, uh, do my diploma paper like take the exam uh, and I did that like I, I got hired and I started working I improved a lot since I started working for Gameloft uh, there were no excuses not to draw <laughs> stuff because there were I was paid to do work and I had to perform for those money and yeah I, I improved a lot I think back then I realized that I I was really slacking before having a job at a job you're not allowed to slack <laughs> you have to perform and work hard for your money and hmm so what, are, what what's the difference in terms of, you know, how much you were working before and after you got the job? Um, before, I, I was working at around six hours a day mm -hmm. uh, by myself. Like, I'm talking about personal stuff because uh, school stuff wasn't attracting to, uh, very attractive to me. Uh, there were, like, the, the assignments weren't that great. We have to make compositions with dots and stuff like that. For example, and I think I, I will leave that to the <laughs> abstract artists. I was interested in learning anatomy and perspective, and again, I forgot the question. <laughs> um, can uh, you the, right? Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I was asking, you know, oh, what, yeah, what the I, difference was between. 
Yeah, uh, so yeah, I was working for myself around six hours a day, practicing, studying anatomy and stuff like that. Uh, and at work I was drawing for eight, close to nine hours at first, in the first three months, because I really wanted to keep this job. In the first three months you are uh, on probation, so they can fire if if you do, if they don't like you, you know. And I really wanted to make a good impression, so I was working very hard. I, I didn't even, even take the lunch breaks. Uh, and I was also sitting uh, there after the program for a ha another half an hour to finish my tasks. So, so yeah, and they were very happy with me. And yeah, so I improved my uh, drawing schedule with three hours in that time. Uh, and after work, I was practicing at home also because I really wanted like badly to show them how how motivated I am to work for them and stuff like that. So, so what problem, happened about sleep? Day. Sleep became a problem, so uh, I cut down hours from it. <laughs> I had a while when I was sleeping six hours a night. Mm -hmm. uh, I was waking up at 6 o'clock a.m. Mm -hmm. and doing uh, some of you, like of the future viewers, viewers of this video might remember those times. I was waking up at 6 a.m. and doing and do a, did a live stream for an hour, a warm-up before work. And after that, I was going to work. And when I came back, I was uh, doing commissions and stuff like that. Uh, so you're just working like crazy. Yeah. Uh, back then, I discovered the, the Crimson Daggers. And um, I, I was... Um, at the right place at the right time, they were they were just starting the Golden Boys. Uh, for those who do not know, it's a, a online competition based on studies and things you you can learn in one month by studying very hard. And um, I saw, I remember when I saw Sam Carr's entry in those gold, Golden Boys, and man, then I got really motivated, and I said. I, I g gotta get better than this guy and like beat him in the next Golden Boy. He had like a crazy amount of uh, studies and uh, applied studies. It, it was crazy. Like it blew my mind, literally. Right. So yeah. I, I want to talk about that actually. I want to talk about the studies because um, uh, you do a lot of studies. And yeah, because. I'm not very smart. I don't remember things very well. So I have to do it like a monkey, repeat it like a lot of times <laughs> so I can remember uh, a, a certain thing. Uh, because if you're doing a study like just to copy colors, I mean, it's okay if you're trying to learn colors, trying to copy colors. But after a while, you realize that you have to learn how the world works and try to learn why it looks like that or why it's is it stitched like that or things like that you know uh, and copying and making pretty, pretty picture uh, pictures doesn't work anymore you have to understand what's behind those things and i'm trying very hard to understand those things now like i i think this is the next step of learning before i was copying like mindlessly pictures right and calling them studies, even though I wasn't learning anything like, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I wasn't learning anything in particular, except by uh, that using Photoshop really well. So, yeah, they, they were good for learning the tool, but I wasn't learning uh, composition, colors, uh, design, uh, theory, or stuff like that. So um, yeah. let's talk about that a bit, about what's the difference between mindless copying and actually studying. Um, actually, mindless copying made me not do live streams anymore. Uh, I, I realized that I was doing a lot of work, but I wasn't remembering anything. That was because uh, I was talking to other people on live stream in the same time. I wasn't paying attention to the, the study. I was, I was an automated pilot, or how do you call that? <laughs> like, my brain was like drawing by itself, and I was thinking that something else, you know. Right. 
uh, and yeah, drawing all alone, like focusing uh, on your study, makes you remember much more from that study. You pay more attention. Um, some people say that, for example, music, it, it, it's bad to listen to it uh, while drawing. Uh, yeah, I kind of agree with that. I had a time when I wasn't listening to music uh, while studying because I, w I got carried away and I was thinking at the song instead of thinking at the study. Uh, but after a while I started listening to music again because, I don't know, um, sitting so much in the chair, now my back hurts and I need to focus at something else <laughs> while drawing, you know? Uh, so yeah, I developed a back problem uh, and I hope I will fix that by swimming and doing lots of workouts. Mm -hmm. But yeah, now I need to focus on something else also. Uh, and I choose music because music doesn't steal all your focus from the study right. uh, and yeah it, uh, again I, I jumped from question to <laughs> I don't no, know that, that's totally fine um, and and the, another thing I noticed about your studies is you actually take notes yeah uh, notes actually make you sometimes you, you think you're studying something very hard but again your brain is thinking that's something else and you don't realize that uh, but Taking the time to write down, it you force your brain to to pay attention. <laughs> like, have I seen this thing before? If if yes, then it's a pattern. So I'm gonna type it, write it down. Like this shape happens from time to time in these areas. For example, I gave you some studies before we talked we, with the tigers, and we were talking about the tigers yesterday. And mm -hmm. I I start I took tiger heads and tried to observe uh, repeating patterns on their heads. For example, they have a W thick uh, black lip under their their under lip is a big big W shape, black W shape. Uh, under the eye, they have a white uh, stripe followed by a dark thin black stripe and stuff like that. I try to remember this, these things and uh, for everyone who tries to understand what I'm saying right now, maybe uh, Saikara will put some uh, some of the studies uh, uh, oh, yeah. on the video so you will see exactly my notes. Oh, it's all happening right attention. now. It's happening. Oh, cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh yeah, those are the the stuff, uh, proportion stuff. I'm trying to pay attention. For example, once I studied a, a crocodile and I was trying to observe it. It has some curvatures on his, uh, I don't know how to call it, its mouth. <laughs> there are three curvatures, and around the the third curvature, it's it's the eye. So it's very easy to remember those those notes. Uh, then remembering an entire picture, like you study perfectly of a crocodile, but after a while this information will go away. But if you go back to these studies and read them again, you will remember stuff. I was just looking over some of the images that I sent uh, to Sycra and uh, I'm supposed to draw something with fur right now and um, basically I, once I did a study of fur and it was white fur and black fur in the same image, and it it, it was snowy. Uh, and basically, you can see the snow on the dark side of the fur, but that doesn't occur to you until you write it down. So if I'm drawing something that it, it, it's in snow and it has dark fur, I can make snow sitting on its fur. Like, it, it will probably get snow on it, you know? Mm. And I'm, I'm trying to decipher all this stuff that happen in, in nature like with this kind of studies you know and writing down uh, definitely helps me remember now recently you did something which I don't know I guess some people would consider crazy you did 2000 hand studies how is that yeah <laughs> uh, again the fear of looking bad made me do that like Sometimes I, I really feel bad of, about my drawings, and I know what the problem is, but I'm too afraid to tackle it. But before, why I did this 2,000 hands? Because at the workshop, I was, uh, the Behind the Iron Curtain workshop that happened this September, uh, I was supposed to do some drawings for a few friends, and 
I didn't know how to draw hands still after four years of drawing. Uh, and I, I said to myself, okay, so how am I going to learn to draw hands? Obviously by drawing. So I set a goal to draw 3,000 3, hands till the end of the month, but that was not possible. <laughs> it, it was like 100 hands a day. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, and that takes four hours. It's only line art, but I learned so much by doing those 100 hands. In the first day, I, I probably didn't learn anything. It was the hardest day. Uh, also, the last day of the the studies were, were was very hard because I I lost my uh, will to learn. I got very uh, tired of seeing hands. Yeah, I can but, imagine. Uh, yeah, I, I really learned a lot. Like patterns, uh, there are patterns in the hands. You know, um, I don't know uh, what patterns I remember. For example, if you look at your palm and you bend it, it bends in, almost in the half. It's not bending where the fingers are, and that's very freaky <laughs> when you notice that. Um, so yeah, most people think when they look at the palm that the fingers bend where the fingers start. So yeah, look right. at your palm and bend it. <laughs> it bends in in half. It's look, it looks like your hand is broken. So yeah, uh, those things like, uh, pop out after a while like the index finger and the ring finger are the same height so if you draw one then the other one is very easy to draw and stuff like that right um so i mean it's one thing to listen to you and you'll say about how you did these studies but um i guess a question i'm curious about is how do you do the study in terms of how do you keep motivated? How do you stop from going crazy after drawing all these hands? Uh, How do I, you stay awake? <laughs> I don't know. I really like to do quality work and I'm trying very hard with these studies. And I mean, I want to be a top artist someday and this motivates me. I mean, um, I also listen to a lot of motivational speeches and music and I I recently bought all the Rocky collection. That movie motivates me a lot. Uh, so yeah, those kinds. Like, I I really like uh, seeing other people succeed in their domain. It, it motivates me, even though it's not if it it's not drawing. Rocky is a boxer, a fictional boxer, but still like uh, makes me want to push as hard as I can. Also, real life people who did already did this uh, make me very motivated, like Hannes, Dave, uh, Sam, and a lot of other guys. Uh, it's crazy, like, when you see somebody pushing hard, you want to be like him, and I, I'm really thankful that I found these people. I, I w was, again, born in the right time, because if, if it wasn't for the internet and meeting all you awesome people, uh, I, I wouldn't be here. I, it 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 would be have been impossible to switch my career from mathematics to design. Like, no, I'm sure. I think I mean you put in the work. So, um, so going back to the your story, uh, we left off that you were in Game Loft. So, uh, how long did that last, and why did you leave? Mm, well. Uh, I never thought I'm gonna leave Gameloft. I was like very happy in the beginning, but after a while, like doing jobs, I mean, there were fun jobs and there were not so fun jobs. Like doing textures, I really hate doing textures, uh, user interface design and stuff like that. Those are like, I mean, they they might be attractive f for graphic artists or texture artists, but for me, they they weren't. Uh, very satisfying. So, after a while, I got tired of those. And uh, besides wo uh, working at Gameloft, I was doing also freelance. Uh, and I said to myself, "Okay, the as soon as I'm gonna earn double the money I'm earning at Gameloft, three times in a uh, three months in a row, I'm gonna quit my job." Hmm. And that's that's what happened. I was earning much more by sitting at home and drawing 
like freelance stuff. Um, then like I was working like four hours a day on freelance stuff every every day after work. So uh, yeah, like it, it's not compared working nine hours and getting less paid than working four hours. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. It's not. <laughs> it's not healthy <laughs> because yeah. And I also wanted to stay at home with my girlfriend and yeah. <laughs> I have my own schedule, like not. If I don't feel like working one day, I can take a day off without anyone uh, would uh, care about that. Right. So yeah, now I have more free time. So also <laughs> I have like days that I draw like from nine to eleven p.m. So most of the like the entire day I get up from my chair only to eat and stuff like that right. but it's still much more relaxing and I do jobs that I want to do not uh, jobs that I have to do because if I don't do I won't get paid like now I'm I'm very happy with what I'm doing so yeah so are you primarily a concept artist right now or are you an illustrator I think I'm more of an illustrator um, in the beginning, I was dreaming to become a concept artist, but I learned, like, as the time passed by, uh, I learned that um, I really enjoy more illustration. Um, concept art is about doing a lot of iterations of the same character to find the perfect one. Also, in illustration, this can happen. But in concept art, is, uh, I think it's more stressful. You have to always find that new idea like and it's very hard after a while you it, no matter how how much you search for inspiration after a while it it gets very hard and uh you can get depressed by that and yeah <laughs> i'm a very sensitive guy and i really i get really easy depressed so yeah <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so what are you working on right now, then? Uh, now I'm an illustrator for the game Legend of Cryptids, made by Applebot. It's a company from Japan. It's something similar to Magic the Gathering, except this uh, these guys have their compositions vertically. So, b basically, it's an iPhone game and an Android game. Uh, and the character must be visible on the entire screen. So... Yeah, <laughs> I do monsters, fairies, stuff like that for them. Illustrations, basically. And it's really fun. I really enjoy my job now. Awesome. So uh, when it comes to artists, then, who are your inspirations? Um, my biggest inspiration right now is Hannes. <laughs> uh, I, I keep on saying this, like, every time I have the chance, I, I can be enough thankful for him existing <laughs> and doing what he did. Like, I think I'm not the only one inspired by him. Mm -hmm. um, also, Dave, Jana, Marco, uh, and pff, a lot of guys, Scott Robertson, Neville Page, Dil Dylan Cole. Oh, man, there there are a lot. And also, like, I have buddies from Crimson Daggers that I started with, and they're a big inspiration to me, like PK Mike, uh, Jean, uh, Sam, Miles, you, Marius, uh, who else? Sigbrash is a good friend of mine also, and it's an inspiration to see how much he works. Uh, Melanie, uh, don't f we, we mustn't forget about Isra and Brent. <laughs> Those two are crazy good. So yeah. Cool. Um so what advice would you give to someone who is maybe just finishing high school or in college and maybe they're unhappy like the way you were unhappy uh doing mathematics. Uh what advice would you give to them if they're thinking about maybe moving into a field like art? Uh Draw as much as you can uh, and draw what you like because if you draw what you don't like, you will end up doing a job that you don't like. <laughs> uh, 
So yeah, that's what I avoided when I quit mathematics and informatics. Getting a job that I don't like and getting a job, it's, it's for the rest of your life in the end. You will have to deal with that till you die. So better do something that you like and than something that you don't like. Um, also, be surrounded by uh, inspiration, inspirational people. Like, find your favorite artists, talk to them, uh, try to copy them, like, imitate them, uh, and try to overcome them. If somebody does uh, 100 hands, do 150 hands and kick their asses. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's the way you you... I think you get at the top, like being surrounded by motivational people and working really hard and doing what you like. Um, awesome. Well, I want to yeah. thank you so much for spending time and uh, sharing your insights. And Yeah, I hope they help. <laughs> and I hope I, I didn't sound stupid because no, not I, at the all. first interview, and I, I think I'm a bit nervous, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sure you'll get a lot more interviews in the future. So, um, yeah. So, thanks, Alex, and thanks everyone who watched. Thanks for having me. It's an it's an honor. Like, uh, also another fun story. When I started drawing, I was watching Sakura videos, guys. So, yeah. <laughs> I it it was like a shock when I actually talked the first time with him because. It, 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 for me, it was one of those guys that I will never talk like because he's so great. So yeah, I, I was like, "Whoa, I'm talking to Psycho." And now the I tables have. have turned. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, they haven't. Like, you're an amazing guy. No. All right. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>